We just wrapped up the Britain Yank podcast version, and now it's our turn. So, Bill, what'd you think? What are your thoughts on the place? It sucks. <laughs> <laughs> No, seriously. Um, you walk in the place, uh, it, it, it's light, it's airy, it's not echoey, because that's important when you're doing yeah, an audio sure. podcast. Mm -hmm. um, everything is just tip top. And not only that, the beers are damn good. So, I mean, you, right. can't, you can't beat that. Uh, Eric's a good brewer, especially of the uh, Russian Imperial style. Are they Russian? Uh, yeah. they, or they just, just call them Imperial style. Yeah, and this is my first beer, and it's a really nice, tasty, fresh New England IPA. Can you tell us a little bit about it? Yeah, sure. That's, so that's Murky Waters that you're drinking. It's a Citra Mosaic uh, New England style IPA. Uh, we just kegged it about a week ago, so you're getting it about as fresh as fresh can be uh, without pouring it out of the bright tank. Um, so it's a beer we've been we've been working on for about a year or so, mm -hmm. kind of tweaking here and there, and we're pretty happy with the results. Awesome. How about we go check uh, how this is all brewed? Sure. What do you say? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I'll just stay here and drink my beer. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about Riverlands, how it came to be. We are a brand new brewery. We got kind of started uh, back in 2016. This would have been at a friend's barbecue in the 4th of July. Um, I was living with one of the other owners at the time, and uh, the other two guys are brothers, and they came over and they brought their father, who turned out to be our fifth investor, and he had been retired, he was bored, as that tends to happen sometimes, and he wanted to invest in something. And he tried some of the homebrew that we had at this house, and he just thought, well, this is it, let's start a brewery. And he asked, Eric, do you want to be a professional brewer? And that's the easiest question in the world I think I've ever had to answer. Of course I did. Yeah. <laughs> so no, was there any um, hesitation? Right. I'm like, oh my god, yes, <laughs> please. You want to pay me to do my right. Like, <laughs> right. Like, yeah. That's a dream come true. Yeah. That was back in 2016, and now here we are. Here we are. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So we we started with the murky waters. We have a pilsner. What's this called? This is yellow kayak. Yellow. Uh, it's our 5.2 percent German style pilsner. Uh, we dry hopped it a little bit. Um, if you've ever had Firestone Pivo Pills, mm -hmm. this beer was kind of an inspiration to that uh, to this. Um, it uses a similar hop, Sapphire hops from Germany. Uh, we did straight Sapphire. Um, it's it's a beautiful beer, crystal clear, what a Pilsner should be. It's not um, overpoweringly hoppy. You know, we we wanted to do something that was a little more flavorful than what your traditional pills might be, but not scare away people who are new to craft beer. Right. Um, a perfect gauge was a neighbor of mine who only drinks uh, old style. And I gave him this beer and he's like, well, this tastes like beer. I'm like, <laughs> well, hopefully they <laughs> all taste yeah, like beer. beer. But I knew what he meant when this tastes like beer. Right. Um, so this hopefully will appeal to a newer craft audience as well as people who can kind of get into the intricacies of the style. Doing this for a while, I can tell you that there, you know, there's one thing that breweries, there's, there's, you always have that friend who doesn't drink craft beer, or they're, they're committed to drinking mm -hmm. Miller Lite right. or, or Bud Light, yep. you know, one of those big breweries. And you have to have something to like cater them, you know, that way you can get like the crowds in. Sure. Which is, you know, yeah. this is actually a very tasty beer. I can taste a little bit mm -hmm. European mm -hmm. in it almost, you know, but not like overly crazy. You right. know, like some of those weird imports that you can get sometimes, but it's very tasty beer, very tasty Pilsner. I would definitely recommend it to someone who, you know, is just getting into craft beer, wants to kind of take, you know, dip their toe in the water, I guess mm -hmm. to say. Yeah, this beer is incredibly crisp and approachable, so I think it'll have some good mass appeal. But one of the reasons I was excited about coming here is because I saw your guys on deck list, and you guys are like, just, you guys are just checking all the boxes. I brew what I like to drink, and that's that's, awesome. that's what it boils yeah. down to. Uh, I, I listen to a lot of podcasts and things like that. I, I have a 30 minute drive to work, so I, I listen to these things, and I hear a lot of people say that they do these styles because it's what sells, but I do these styles because that's what I like to drink. Uh, I really enjoy New England IPAs. I've been trying to brew them since 2014. Uh, I remember the first time I, I had a heady topper, 
you know, and uh, that's what inspired me to try Absolutely. and brew some of these styles. And it's it's just who we are. It's what we like to drink. But at the same time, uh, I don't ever want to neglect traditional styles. So every time you know you find a hazy IPA, you'll find imperial stouts. They'll always be on our menu, fruited sours and things like that. We'll always have a pilsner. We'll always have something like a, we've currently got an English dark mild on tap. Um, so we like to dip our toes in both ends. That's you know, awesome. Like we like yeah. to do the trendy styles, but we want to keep it traditional in, in other ways as well. Making some for everybody. Obviously, right. those beers sell a lot because let's let's admit it, they're good. Oh yeah, <laughs> I mean sure. they're really good. Um, so let's talk about how these are made. So what, if you can take us through some of this uh, equipment you got here. Yeah, uh, sure. We, we have an American-made brew house here from uh, Quality Tank Solutions in Wisconsin. We've got a ten-barrel system, so we've got a hot liquor tank, a mash tun, and our brew kettle. And this is where the beer is actually made. The Riverlands theme, obviously, it's all throughout the beer mm -hmm. and in the place. But I'm looking at your fermenters right now, and <laughs> Matt can turn around. You, you named yeah. them, which is which is yeah. something we've seen, you know, sure. at other places. Yeah. And the names, they're just warming my heart right now. So <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna have to pan through that. And, yeah, and please sure. tell me the story, and you know, behind the fermenters and, and what's yep. going on there for these guys. Well, uh, we are all rock and roll nerds at Riverlands. So uh, we've got Paige, Plant, JPJ, and Bonzo for our, our four <laughs> fermenters. And uh, for anyone not versed in rock and roll, Led Zeppelin right there. there. That's Led Zeppelin. <laughs> uh, I grew up listening to Led Zeppelin. My older brother was a, you know, educated me in music as, as I grew up. And Led Zeppelin was always, always my band. And then as I got a little bit older, walk on down here a little further into the, the brew space. We have, uh, I know this is a, a beer thing, but if I may digress real quick, the absolute greatest man oh, in all of rock and roll right here, <laughs> Sir David Grohl, even though he hasn't been formally knighted yet, he should be. Uh, Dave Grohl is my absolute musical icon. Uh, I, I started playing guitar a while ago, and he's the reason. Amazing. Uh, I am a huge Foo Fighters fan, huge Nirvana fan. Uh, so Dave Grohl was uh, obviously the first take so that I, I had to, to say name. you're going to have music here, then? I think so. All right, we'll have we. some music. All right. And then we have uh, Josh Homme of Queens of the Stone Age is our, cool. our last one. And if you turn around behind you, we have our little one-barrel pilot system. <laughs> Petty. <laughs> So, it, yeah, and you guys should definitely follow along on Facebook with these guys because, you know, they're they're definitely showing what's coming up next and all the cool beers they're making. And one thing I saw on their Facebook is that you guys have barrels and you're already filling them, which makes us very happy that you're getting out, <laughs> you're getting out in front of a barrel program. Sure, it's definitely yeah. a thought that you've woven into the business plan. It's, oh, not, yeah. it's not something you, you thought of afterwards, right? Right. Well, no, we, we wanted to be, that, that, that was actually a huge priority when we got started is, uh, Imperial Stouts. Um, and obviously, it's where beer drinkers today are, are heavily focused. But uh, again, uh, to reiterate something I said before, like these are the beers that we like to drink, and bourbon barrel aged Imperial Stouts are awesome. Uh, whether they're straight up, whether they're adjuncted, doesn't matter. So um, I was referred to Calvin Cooperage, a, a barrel uh, house down in Kentucky, by another brewer, and I just happened to send him an email. And they said, well, we have three Weller barrels right now. And any bourbon drinker knows Weller is pretty damn good bourbon. Mm -hmm. So I obviously so immediately said, please, God, yeah, give me those, those barrels now. <laughs> uh, so they are stored over here. And we did a 10-barrel batch of our base Imperial Stout. Uh, took half of it, adjuncted them in some fun ways, which we're going to have it opening. And then the other half of it went into these. Right here. You'll have to forgive us this one. This one's empty and decorative because uh, we thought three barrels looked stupid. So uh, we've got three full. It'll get filled. Right. It will get filled eventually. We've got three full Weller bourbon barrels uh, of our base Imperial Stout, which we're going to let sit for a little while. Probably take a little sample around Fobab time just to see if maybe we can get a little something in there. Uh, otherwise, we're going to let them sit and. Have some fun. On the website it says Pride of the Fox. Uh, like you said, there are a couple owners who are local. What does that, what does that mean? How to, to be a part of this community? What does that mean to you guys? Well, so uh, our main investor Andy and his two sons Dave and Steve. Uh, I'm noticing they're starting to sneak off. Let's just listen to you talk a little bit. Andy's been here for decades. His his sons both grew up in St. Charles. Both went to high school here, grade school, all that. 
um, we wanted to be part of this community. We knew that uh, St. Charles, we, we looked at a couple other towns when we were trying to get going, uh, but we knew St. Charles was the goal from, from day one. And it just happened to work out that we found this building after almost a year of searching. Um, That's sometimes the hardest part. Uh, it, it was by far the yeah. worst part of this yeah. entire process was finding this place. But once we set up in St. Charles, we knew being part of this community was important to us. Uh, so the Pride of the Fox, uh, that's the town motto, it's the name of our house, Pale Ale, which is uh, going to be in the tank starting next week. Um, our, our slogan here is brewed with pride, enjoy the ride. Uh, we just want to be proud of the beer we make, we want the community uh, to be proud of us. We, we are very proud of the community that we are serving here. Um, it's just, it's a wonderful place to be and we hope to be good citizens of it. Well, we're excited to have you guys here. Uh, yeah, it's an incredible story, and, and we're glad you guys stuck around to kind of build this out in, in your hometown area. Yeah. So yeah, we can't wait to see what's next, and can't wait for it to open. Like we said, this place will be <laughs> this place will be open by the time this airs. You guys will be knee deep in all sorts of new problems and business and uh, customers problems, and, and problems you haven't thought of. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. So this is like I said, two days, be, two day, three days before the soft opening, and then yep. wow, yeah. So and, and we appreciate you lending your time. Yeah, Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, of course. So, anyways, cheers yeah. and please get I some, will. Yeah, yes. get some sleep and, and definitely cheers. enjoy the ride. Cheers. 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 Thanks, guys. We've got our mash tun, our boil kettle. It's a uh, 10 barrel system. What are we doing here, boys? Gary. Sorry, I'm shooting video. It's like, check out the sound. It sounded good, though. It sounded really good. It's just so nice. Let me know. Okay. Right. Yeah, you're good. Uh, right, so we have a uh, American-made brew house here. I, 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 I,